What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna check out some 10 inch long range FPV drone. It's brand new from Gap RC. It's the Mark IV series. Recently we did a review on the channel of the LR8, which is sitting here on my right. And on my left, I've got the LR10. And over the Chinese New Year, Gap RC sent us this quad. It is a bind and fly, it's about $300. And being that price, it's a pretty good alternative to someone who's on a budget. If you already fly analog, you want to upgrade to HD later. It's a great alternative to the Helion. Um, and one of the reasons I say that is because number one, it's around $300. Um, number two, it is a 10 inch long range FPV drone. It does have a 2.5 watt VTX and it has cross braces. And I know some of the guys out there were like, Hey, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of the LR8. It doesn't have cross braces. Well, they put cross braces on this one, so it kind of eliminates some of the uh, extra vibrations. And we're going to talk about the tune in this video. Uh, I'm going to talk about my experience flying it. We're going to do a flight test with this one, and then we'll come back as always, and we'll check it out on the bench. And I'll show you some of the things that they have on here, uh, some of the things I like, don't like, and uh, yeah, we'll get right into it. Gap RC LR10 flight test time, guys. Let's go ahead and get it up in the air, and let's talk about this machine. Uh, First of all, it is a 10 inch long range drone. As you saw in the title of this video, that's why you're watching it. It's running the Rad VTX by GEPRC. It's 5.8, 2.5 analog VTX, and it has a Caddick H1 camera on board, which is what you're seeing right here. So I'm gonna show you some FPV DVR, and I'm also gonna show you what you can bring home if you go out for a flight test with a Hero 10 on there. Um, you can put anything on there, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, it does not come with a mount. That's one drawback about it, but you know, you can find TPU mounts on Amazon. Uh, kind of what you can do is rig them up on there. I'm gonna show you after this flight test how the bolt pattern is for the GoPro setup. Uh, and I'll try to find my measuring tool so I can show you the millimeters between screw mounts. Now, first of all, the tune, I, I would say the tune is about 80% on this. Um, I wouldn't say the tune's perfect. I, I do hear some hum of the props a little bit, but that's pretty distinct 10 inch low pitch sound. When you get up to these 30, 3000 series motors, uh, yeah, they, they, they have a lot of hum to them. So a 10 inch prop sounds way different than a five, six and seven inch. And the seven inch is where things start to kind of quiet down. Five inch is just ripping and the Karens will come circling you in their minivans with a, with a five inch when you're freestyling. But we're also gonna check out some of the DVR and I'm gonna show you how it performs around these super thick evergreen trees. Um, so when there's some kind of uh, something between myself and the VTX, you will see some breakup. Analog seems to be a little bit worse than uh, my DJI 03 FPV system. You can upgrade this one later because it is an HD flight controller too. So uh, start out with analog later on when you decide to buy a DJI goggles. Maybe you're waiting for 04. You have plenty of room on this frame to add components. You can pull that VTX off the back and, and you can put a 03 on there. So I'm just trying a little maneuverability and like uh, right here, right around here somewhere, I did uh, clip a tree branch and it almost took me out right there. Oh my God, um, nothing like hitting a tree branch with a 10 inch FPV drone. So um, I'm getting further back out in the field now away from anything <laughs> close in. I just want to try a couple flips and rolls because um, even though it's a 10 inch, you know, with a LiPo, you could probably freestyle this. It's not bad at all. And it feels pretty snappy. I've got an 8,000 milliamp Lyon running a 6s configuration and it, it does fine so flight time I, I think we can get 25 minutes on this squad. if you want to run a 10 ah battery you're probably going to get closer to 28 I, I dare i say 30 minutes i think that's kind of stretching it uh, a lot of that depends on like if it's windy that day if you're flying in the mountains where the wind is up it's going to sag your battery down and you're going to get less flight time so there's a lot of factors that dictate long range battery uh, performance and flight time. Things like wind, if you have a headwind. And what I was telling Brandon the other day when we were flying is that he needs to fly upwind first. So practice 
paying attention where the wind is. Fly upwind and then fly downwind on the way home. Uh, one of the most important things about long range. If you fly out downwind, sometimes you can't make it back upwind. Uh, so same thing in kite surfing. We always kind of try to kite upwind and then just have a nice little downwind or back to the home. When you have wind at the quad's tail, you're going to be flying twice as fast. Don't fly long range to begin with. Practice a little bit, flying a little distance and then back and a little further out, and back and a little further out you know, as you progress in your long range experience. I don't recommend trying to fly out like six miles the first time you get a 10 inch. It's not a good idea. Just because they call them long range drones doesn't mean that you can long range. So keep that in mind. You need an experience to learn what you can and can't do with these types of drones. Right there is some breakup between those evergreen trees right there. But it comes back. And we have a saying in the FPV community, it's when in doubt, punch out. So if you're low to the ground and say you're a mile out, lose video feed. If you increase the throttle up past around 80%, you get back above the horizon line. As you get back up in the air, you know, around 100, 200 feet, you're gonna start to regain your video feed. So the further you go out and the closer to the ground you are, more likely you are to lose signal. But again, as far as flying a 10 inch is concerned, if you're wondering how it flies, it flies a lot like a, a large, like 10 inch, it's kind of like the RC glider or sailplane of the FPV drones. It really feels like a giant sailplane to me. It's really locked in, it's predictable, it's slow, it's cinematic. Uh, so for professional cinema jobs where you need speed, they're ultra fast and super smooth. Almost like a Mavic with a little more fun to it. So awesome. a lot cheaper than a Mavic too. Yeah, so let's go back to the bench and check it out. And I'll tell you a little more about it. Welcome back from the flight test guys. This is the box that it comes in. And this is a comparison of the LR8 versus the LR10 boxes, just a little bit bigger. This was fun. That was a lot of fun to fly. They are so locked in at the 10 inch size, I can't even begin to describe it. But the best way I can describe it is it feels like you're flying like a sailplane. And I mentioned this was kind of like the poor man's Helion in a way. And for me, it has a better type of setup than the Helion as far as top mount battery. I'm not a big fan of long range battery mount on the bottom because when you do come in for a landing, you better have some kind of carbon plate under your battery to protect your battery against all that weight that's coming in for a landing. It's just like one of the things that we don't do in LR. Uh, all the rest of the quads that I have that are LR quads all have top mount batteries. And just to give you some size comparison, this is the LR8, which we reviewed a while back on the channel. Look how much smaller the LR8 looks. Uh, and a seven is even a little bit smaller than the eight. But uh, as far as what we call the truck body from front to back, it's a little bit longer. Maybe I'd say a, a, an inch and a half longer but it does not come with a GoPro mount as well. Uh, and we're gonna talk about kind of the Gephardt Seed straps. I wasn't a big fan of the straps. They didn't hold the 6S uh, 8,000 milliamp pack very well. It's a little bit wider. Somebody said maybe you can stand it up, but it's still the same circumference around. So uh, I feel like they need to have just maybe another half inch on those straps would have been nice and comfy. So I actually added an extra strap, which I had laying around in the shop, which was one of the gym fan ones. These are nice because it goes all the way around an 8,000 or a 10 AH battery. Uh, and that's perfect. But let's talk about the price of this one. And for me, price is really awesome on this one. Again, like the LR8 and the LR7 series that we reviewed before on the channel, the LR10, like it's around the $300 price point, which is kind of crazy. And once you add an ELRS receiver, that's gonna get you up to about 319. And then if you add, uh, say the 2.5 watt analog version with a TBS Crossfire antenna, you're looking at around $339, which is about 340 bucks for a 10 inch long range FPV drone. I think that's a pretty decent price, especially for GEP RC gear that's on this quad. And let's just get real for a second. This is $340 buying and fly with a TBS Crossfire 915 megahertz antenna on there. It has a 2.5 watt VTX on the back, which will take you way out there. Uh, I don't even know how many miles out this would be range tested to, but I'm sure it will do uh, 10 miles for sure. Now the Helion from iFlight, that one's $949 to start with no receiver on there. It does have a DJI-03 
the DJI 03 looks way better than analog systems. But I'm telling you, if you put both of those quads up a mountain somewhere and you try to get certain shots, the DJI 03 will definitely tuck in uh, and probably give you better video back to your goggles than say the traditional analog system pumping even like 2.5. This is gonna get a little bit, a uh, little bit of pixel or a little bit of uh, static in the screen when you do dip behind trees and things like that but it will give you decent penetration and you'll still come home with very similar shots to something that would cost you a thousand dollars uh for much cheaper around 349 dollars so i feel like i honestly feel like you could get the same type of mountain surfing shots with a gopro on here that you could with the iflight helion 10 and some people will say oh no 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 you can't I, I think you can it also depends on the pilot and it depends on the environment. Um, DJI 03 works great, but again, if you're on a budget, I, I guarantee you what you come home with, with the LR10, you're gonna be fascinated with, and you're gonna wanna go out and do it again. It's pretty cool. And the motors on the LR10 are 3000 series motors. They are 3110 900 kV. That's the exact same size motor and kV as what you have on the Helion 10. So um, that's pretty cool. And if I, if I turn this motor bell, you guys can see the copper coils in there. They're pretty thick. Uh, they do look like decent quality. And uh, I do believe they have decent power. You can really hear them a big difference when you spool up with this uh, versus even a seven inch. There's a really big low hum to this. And the bigger the props get, the lower the pitch gets, uh, the lower pitch the, the noise of this drone makes. It's not as high pitch. The smaller drones make a super high pitch noise. And the LR10 is running the exact same glass fiber props as the Helion 10. It's the Gemfan 1050-3s. They are called the Send It propellers, and I kind of see why. Up front, we have the Cadex H1 camera with two side plates. Those are three mil side plates, and we have a three mil bottom plate running from front to back. And it doesn't come with a GoPro mount, which I really wish it did, but for this price, you know, I kind of just put on one of the ones that I had laying around the shop. One other thing that I noticed that was kind of nice for this price is they did have motor wire covers on the top of the frame. And one tip I'm gonna give out to the community, if you get one of these, they do have some pretty kind of uh, long wires that seem a little bit loose up near the frame. And what I would do is just take a big giant zip tie and zip tie them down on each side. That way you don't have a lot of play uh, just hanging around if you come in for a landing or you crash into the scraggle, they're not sticking out to get ripped off. In the back of the quad, we have 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 mountain points for different size VTX, as well as Cadex Vista, the air module, and the rad VTX that I have here from GEPRC. It is a 2.5 watt. I believe you can also get 1.6 and 2 watt available. It does have a little TPU back here for my Immortal T for my TBS antenna right here going to my receiver. You can get to the receiver underneath here. It's pretty easy. And it does come with an extra tall Momoda style antenna. Uh, from GetBarC, which I've flown before, and it has XT60 back here. It would be nice if it was XT90 uh, for a little higher voltage, but it also does have a little extra room back here. If you wanted to add anything larger back here, I'm pretty sure it'll fit Walksnail or HD0 as well. And I flipped over the quad so you guys can see underneath here where I have access to my TBS Crossfire antenna. You also have these three different mounting points. It's kind of hard to see, but you have one here, one here, one here. So all the way from 20 to 30 to 30.5 different types of mounting points for your VTXs, pretty much covering all the different DJI and analog VTXs out there. And this is the quad flipped over again, so you can see how this crossbar is mounted to the bottom. They have two bolts through here and two on the frame here holding the motor. So these bolts right here will be just a few millimeters longer. So pay attention to that when you're kind of taking your motors on and off. If you break one and you're reinstalling one, you don't want to drive the they have wrong screws up into your motors. Um, super important. And I have to say, these are probably about a two mil crossbar, maybe two and a half mil. They're not three, which would be pretty nice, but it does give you the extra rigidity to kind of isolate some of that frame vibration to the flight controller and make it fly a little bit better with less jello in the camera. The LR10 on the scale is 939.6 grams, and that's without the battery. So with the battery itself, the battery itself is weighing in at around 
894 for a 6s 8000 pack so do the math on that and uh, it is not a super light quad but it is lighter again lighter than the helion uh, by iflight so the helion is coming in at 950 grams without the battery so it's just a little bit lighter than the helion now this is a seven millimeter arm which is pretty good seven mil is nice and thick and it's going to give you a pretty good durability as far as having the crossbar on there you know if you crash in with these motors and you hit rocks and things like that in the mountains you're, you're definitely going to break some things here so uh you know saying uh, giving a durability rating on something that you're going to crash in the mountains is it's it's honestly almost impossible uh if you want to compare this to the helion the helion has replaceable arms as well and that one comes in at eight millimeters on the helion versus seven mil here and the wheelbase on here is 429 millimeter and in the middle we have a double up stack so that means that you're going to place the escs the escs on here are just underneath the flight controller and those are 60 amp escs which are nice enough to be able to handle uh, a 6s battery this is a little more amperage than what you get on the helion as well which i think is cool and it has the gep rc f405 v2 on here which i mentioned that we can do uh, a little hd upgrade on because it does have an hd port on this flight controller allowing us to add some DJI goodness on there later if you choose to. So one of the things that I didn't like was that it didn't come with a GoPro mount. Uh, I really wish they would include one. Maybe GepRC has one on their website. If I can find it, I'll put a link down below. Uh, it might, you can see a standard size GoPro mount here for seven inch. It just doesn't quite reach. Uh, and I'm missing it by probably five millimeter from this standoff right here. So that would have been nice if I would have had that type of accessory in the box. But again, they're kind of shaving off cost for you guys by not including the GoPro mount, also not including the GPS on the back here. Uh, and if you decide to add GPS, you're gonna have to figure out a way to do that in the back because this mount doesn't appear to have uh, a GPS mount back here, but you do have two extra points back here. So if you do get another TPU mount, you can bring off the back of this one here. So uh, it is possible to get GPS off the back of this quad. And for me, another thing that I didn't really care for it, I didn't like was the fact that I had a hard time using the straps that came with this one. Uh, they're definitely cheaper grade than what I've seen Gep RC give to us in the past with these bind and flies. Uh, as far as holding like an 8,000 milliamp pack on there, you better have a good battery strap. So what I did was I ran both of those straps plus the gem fan strap around it. Um, this one has a nice rubber coating and it's a way better quality. And again, if I can find some of these, I'll try to put a link down below for the gem fan straps. You just need about an extra inch to make this nice and comfortable um, to where it holds on there nice. Now, as far as putting a GoPro on there, you still have plenty of room. If I scoot the battery all the way back to the back position, right there is still plenty enough room to even get some tilt on there with your GoPro. So at the end of the day, it is a pretty big quad for the price. Is it perfect? No. It, does it have a lot of things that I would like to fix about it that would could be better? Absolutely. Uh, and hopefully in this video, you know, if you bought one of these or you, you plan to buy one, you know what to order in advance. Buy some larger straps, uh, buy some variety of different types of props. I, I feel like these props could be a, maybe a little thinner cord. The tune could be just a little bit better as well. Um, and uh, I wish the camera was maybe a, just a little higher quality than the H1. So uh, those are the things that I, I would change immediately. So if you wanna put the Cadex Retel, the brand new one that came out on here, you're gonna have a sick setup. So that's that's probably what I would do, swap out this camera to a Cadex Retel. Uh, but you can fly it the way it is to start. You're not gonna have any problems with it. Once you get way up high on a sunny day, it, it looks fine, uh, especially for your first 10 inch. So upgrade it as you go. Um, you know, some haters might say, oh, well you have to add all this extra stuff on there. It's literally like some longer straps and another camera. Uh, and I think you'll be pretty good. We're also going to give you hopefully a better tune to the community. Uh, I'm gonna keep working with this quad coming up and I'll release the, the PIDs for it from Drone Camps RC to the FPV community. So we, we always do that for you guys. We do custom PID tunes uh, and we give them away for free. So if you enjoy the channel, again, please do use my link down below. It supports the channel and keeps Drone Camps RC like bringing you the newest and latest and greatest 
of what's new in FPV. So stay tuned. There's some super cool stuff coming up and uh, I can't wait to, to show you. Everybody's back from the Chinese New Year and new stuff is coming our way for spring 2024. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Stick around and please do subscribe. And again, if you want to check out some batteries down below, I've got the Storm link down there. It's a Storm uh, 6 2P 8,000 milliamp Lion pack and those are about $150. And that's a quite a bit bigger battery than the Luminaire Nav. These are around 152, uh, but a little bit smaller. So if you want smaller battery, check out the Nav series. And then if you want the larger Big Daddy battery that can get you that 25 minute to 28 minute flight time, get yourself one of the Gap RC Storms. Uh, 8,000 milliamp, that's where it's at. So guys, take care. I'm Justin Davis, and I will definitely see you on the next one.